In this video, we're going to look at the process of consuming JSON in a .NET client. So we're assuming that we're starting with the JSON stream, and we want to integrate that into a .NET application. So the first thing that we need is some JSON. This is JSON that represents a few uh, favorite keyboard shortcuts, and I made up a few first and last names and threw them in there. It did come from an online source, but to make the video go a little bit faster, I went ahead and pasted it into this thing called jsonviewer.stack.hu. I've used this for a long time, and I really like the way it helps you to visualize what is actually in a JSON document. So you can see here that we kind of have a repeating set of similar information. Now, what we need to do is we need to generate a schema from this JSON document. And app.quicktype.io does a good job of this. If I go ahead and paste in, I've pasted in the JSON on the left, but on the right side, I can look at several different outputs that are generated. One of them is just the simple JSON schema itself, just like so, it tells us a little bit about the document. And then from that, it's able to generate things like a C-sharp client. So I'm at C Sharp and several other languages as well, including Java and JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is copy this and place, paste it into a Visual Studio project. Now with Visual Studio open, I'm going to choose Create a New Project. We'll choose the ASP.NET Core Web Application, and then we'll choose Next. We'll call this one Show My Shortcuts, just like so, and Create. Web Application is fine for our purpose, and once again, Create. Now, one thing we'll want to do if we haven't done it yet, once our project opens, we want to right click and we're going to say manage nugget packages and we're going to download a package that's uh, very useful in this case. And that is Newtonsoft JSON. Just about anything you're doing with JSON will likely require this Newtonsoft plugin. It's one I've used for a while, very handy. So we right click, we go ahead and choose install. If you don't do this, when you paste in the source code, you'll find a bunch of cases where they're using statements that are missing. So we go ahead and choose OK, and we let that roll. Now notice if we click Installed, we see that newtonsoft.json is now installed. So with that, let's run back and look at what file was generated for us. We see it's a class called Welcome and a namespace called QuickType, and they were nice enough to put some instructions up here to tell us how to use it. So Let's look at this uh, welcome class. Let's run back to Visual Studio, right click and choose add, and then we'll say new item. We'll say class, and we'll call it welcome and add. Now we just needed it to create the file for us, so we can highlight, hit delete, and then paste. Now if you take a look, no red lines, which is great news. If you get red lines on the Newtonsoft or on the JSON property, it's likely because you haven't added that Newtonsoft package, but it looks like at this point we're in good shape. So now we can do a simple implementation. I'm going to expand on the index.cs.html, and I'm also going to remember what it says up here. Uh, using quick type and then var welcome equals welcome.fromjson string, and then we need to consume in our JSON string. I'll navigate down to the onGet method, which is invoked when this page is rendered, and I will go ahead and paste the suggestion it gave to me here. So a couple different things I'm going to need to do. The using statement, of course, will go towards the top. Um, one thing that's not defined here is we have to figure out what JSON string is. So for that, we're going to need something called a web client. So I'm going to say using, and then we'll say var web client equals new web client. And this, a web client simply allows us to get some information from the internet, use it locally in our program. So it looks like it's giving us a hint here. Let's go ahead and use uh, systemnet, just like so. We'll, so we will include that, and that goes away. Now. Uh, for the welcome, going to give us a similar hint. Remember that namespace earlier using quick type, just like so? That takes care of the welcome. What we still need, though, is this JSON string. So for this, I'm going to say web client, and then we'll say dot download string. And now I need to give it a the URL where that JSON originally came from. Now, I just made this uh, little form kind of where people could put their favorite shortcut, just host it on Azure in a little free space. So I'll paste in the full path down to that JSON feed, just like so. Terminate with a semicolon. And now let's say string, JSON string equals web client download string, just like so. And that should take care of our JSON string. Now, the next thing we need to do is simply make this variable available to our web page. So I'm going to say view data. And then in square brackets, we'll say welcome, close square brackets, equals, and then our variable welcome. 
And with that, we're all done with this code behind file. I have a hunch we might want to look at some things, so I'm going to go ahead and snap a breakpoint on this, uh, right on that first line, and then I'm going to jump to the index.chtml file. Now, to speed up the video, I put a, just a general HTML table in here with a couple of headings. So uh, feel free to pause the video and copy that if you want, or just take a look on GitHub and grab it from there. Now, if we go up to the top of this page, we have an opportunity to grab this view data welcome that we created in our code behind file. Let's take a look at the data that is returned from this from JSON object, and you see that the data returned is a welcome object, but notice the square brackets, which indicate an array, or in other words, a collection of welcome objects. So each of these are things worth remembering. So let's go back to the chtml page and remember what we just saw. View data, square bracket, double quote, welcome, terminate with a semicolon. This is what's getting passed to us from the code behind. We need to save it into a local variable that our chtml page is going to understand. So let's say var welcomes plural equals view data welcome. Now var is kind of a weak type and we need to express that this is a collection. So we're going to need to do a bit of a cast. Remember the data under the covers is actually an array welcome, like so. So that is almost what we need. We need one more thing though. Remember that this welcome class was generated by QuickType and it has a namespace of QuickType. So we need to add that namespace as well. So let's say QuickType.welcome, unless of course you happen to change it. And now our collection of welcome messages is available to the page. So what we need to do now is take a look at this uh, content and we need to think about where we might want to iterate over this collection of data. Side note, by the way, uh, how do we know it's a collection by looking at the JSON itself? We know that a single square bracket uh, and then a terminating square bracket indicates a collection in JSON where a uh, curly indicates a single object. It's kind of easy to see with the JSON viewer again where you see square bracket as an array and curly represents an object itself. So that's why welcome is the object, but it's an array of welcome objects if that helps. So if we look at our HTML table down here, we know that TR indicates a table row and that's what needs to be inside of the body of our loop. So let's go ahead and make a loop. Uh, we're going to need to start with an, with an at symbol and open curly, which indicates that we are getting into a bit of code then terminate the curly after the tr, just like so. Now within the curly, we're going to do a for each. So for each, and we'll say a quick type dot welcome, welcome in welcomes. Okay, open curly, and then once again, a close curly after the tr, a little reformatting, and I notice now I have an extra close curly up at the top here. So we'll go ahead and terminate that. And now just a few more steps to go. We can refer to this welcome variable with an at symbol. So at symbol welcome, and then first name. Take a look at that. Next line, at symbol welcome, and then last name. At symbol welcome. And let's see, I think we have a shortcut next. So we'll say keyboard shortcut, at symbol welcome. And then we have a software, and at symbol welcome. And then uh, finally, what do is what does it do? And then we will launch. Now, while it's launching, one thing I want to show is the source of those first name, last name, keyboard shortcut, software, and what do. If we take a look at the raw JSON, you can kind of see here that those repeat within each of the objects. In other words, each of the open, close curlies. And so if you look at the viewer, you can see first name, last name, keyboard shortcut, so on and so forth. Now let's go back and take a look at what was generated for us. Part of the value of this quick type is that it found those and it created this partial class, which is kind of like a, a POCO, a, a plain old common language runtime object. So a noun, in other words, a noun. But it did that because it was able to see it by looking at the schema and it sees first name, last name, keyboard shortcut, software, and what do. And then it translates this into C sharp. So with all that talking, uh, the web page is up. Let's go ahead and jump into the debugger and we press F10 and we see JSON string. Uh, looks like we got a string of JSON there. And then F10 is going to parse that into a C sharp object. Now you don't necessarily have to display on a web page at this point. If you look, we have 14, actually 15 counting number zero, 
15 objects in this collection. At this point, you can program against those objects. So we press F5 and look at the results. And sure enough, we have all of our shortcuts read from a JSON feed right here in a local web page, and we parse that through a file. So summary how to read JSON in C Sharp. First of all, get JSON. Take it over to QuickType and set, set your destination source as C Sharp. Create a project with an empty C Sharp class. Paste in the QuickType content. Make sure you've imported newtonsoft.json. Then use web client or something else of your choice to get the JSON raw data and pass it to QuickType. You can read it in as an object, and then you can profit. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.